Got another question here on the NMR topic. So we're up to number 14 now. Now, in my opinion, this is probably the worst A-level NMR question I've ever seen. I remember when it was uh, asked immediately after the exam, this was actually trending on Twitter, much was the sort of loathing of the question by the students who took the exam. So I reckon if you can do this one, you can do any NMR question. Anyway, there it is there. So if you want to have a go at that, pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so essentially we've got to work out what these two R groups are in the orange precipitate L. Um, we've got some information from the carbon-13 NMR spectrum. So there was 14 peaks observed. So obviously that means there's 14 different carbon environments in L. Uh, we'll come back to the carbon-13 NMR spectrum once we've got a, a very good idea about what the, the uh, structure is. But obviously the focus is going to be the proton NMR spectrum. And we've got this extra bit of information about uh, this this um, signal that isn't on the uh, A-level data sheet. So um, a hydrogen bonded to a carbon that is then bonded to a C double bond N would appear in this region here. So like I always do, I'm just going to take each of the signals in turn. I'll start here and just work my way over to the right hand side. We'll talk about the splitting pattern, the area, the shift value, and if we can, we'll draw up that little part of the molecule and we'll just build up the structures as we go. Okay, so we've got a multiplet here in the region sort of 7 to 7.5. Now straight away you can say these are due to aromatic protons. The only other thing it potentially could be, it definitely isn't because of the area of 7 and the fact that it's a multiplet, but you've got your OH and NH, but they would only have... Um, an area of one or two, I suppose it was an NH2. So it's definitely seven aromatic protons. Um, and the other thing we can see from this partial structure is we've got three aromatic protons already featured. So what that's telling us is in one of the R groups, we must have another benzene ring with four hydrogens on. Okay, so there's all that written up. So we're saying between 7 to 7.5 ppm, we've got a multiplet. So we've got um, aromatic protons. The area indicates seven of them. Just a reminder there that we don't need to analyze um, aromatic splitting patterns. That's clearly stated, certainly in the OCR syllabus. And so therefore, what can we say from that? Well, because we've got that benzene ring with three hydrogens on in the, uh, the part of the structure that we do know about, R1 or R2 must feature another benzene ring with four hydrogens on. Okay, so moving on to this signal here. So this is a singlet. So we've got no adjacent hydrogens. We could say that um, it's got an area of one. So there's one hydrogen in the environment. Now the shift, um, there's three possible options. There they are there. But because we've got, we've definitely got an NH there. I think it's safe to say that that signal there is due to that H bonded to that N. Now remember we're formulating our ideas at the moment so we could be wrong there so we may need to come back to that but at the moment I'm saying that that signal at delta 5.3 is due to that H bonded to that N. Okay so moving on to this signal now it's at 2.4 ppm so we're saying it's a quartet um, so there's an adjacent CH3 group to the protons causing that signal. The area of 2 means that it's a CH2 group that's causing the signal. And the shift value, we've got these options here. Now, because we've already established there is a benzene ring in one of the R groups, then it's likely to be this type of hydrogen, so an H bonded to a C that is bonded to a benzene ring. So there it is written up there, delta 2.4 ppm quartet, so adjacent CH3, area 2, so CH2 causes the signal. The shift, the most likely, is this environment here. So from all of that information, we can now say that we've got a benzene ring with a CH2 group on, so they've caused that signal, and bonded to it is a CH3 group. So essentially, we've established either R1 or R2. 
Moving on to this signal now. So this one's at around about 1.8 ppm. It's a singlet. So there are no adjacent hydrogens. Area of three means that it's a CH3 causing the signal. And in terms of the shift values, these are our possible options. And you'll notice that this one here is this environment given in the extra information. So if we look at the structure, if we've got a hydrogen bonded to a carbon, so let's say the carbon's where R1 is, that's bonded to a carbon that's doubly bonded to a nitrogen. So we would have um, this environment here, H to C to C double bond N. So from the information from the signal, singlet and an area of three, we can pretty safely say that either R1 or R2 is a CH3 group, a methyl group. So there's that information written up. So delta 1.8 ppm singlet, so no adjacent hydrogens, area three, so CH3 causes a signal. The shift, we're going for the more slightly option to be the, the one that they told us about the new uh, shift, H to C to C double bond N. So from that we can say that either R1 or R2 is a CH3 group. Move on to the last signal now. So this is around about delta 0 0.8 ppm. It's a triplet, so there's an adjacent CH2. It's got an area of three, so it's being caused by a CH3 group, and the shift is an HC to R. So that's kind of confirmation of what we already knew. Let's just find it there. So we're now talking about these protons here. They've caused that signal. There's three of them. They're in the HCR environment and they're adjacent to two, and that's why these have been split into a triplet. Okay, so we now know that the R groups are CH3 group and this um, sort of ethyl benzene group. Obviously, there's an attachment somewhere here to the main part of the molecule. So we're going to use the carbon-13 NMR to see how we attach this uh, to the rest of the molecule. Okay, so this is the structure, partial structure anyway, um, that I'm very confident about. Um, and we know that we've got a total of 14 um, carbon environments in the molecule from the carbon-13 NMR. So how many have we got in the bit we definitely know about? Well, six, seven, eight. So we need another six carbon environments. We know the other R group is this. And obviously there's two carbon environments from the ethyl group. So that takes us up to 10 carbon environments. So basically we need that there be four carbon environments in the remaining six. So we need a couple of equivalent um, sets of carbons. So that means that this um, aromatic group has to be attached like the way I've drawn it to give us the 14 carbon environments. I'll just show you that. So we've got six, seven, eight, nine. They're equivalent 10, they're equivalent 11, 12, 13, 14. And like I said at the start of the video, if you got that right, happy days, you can do any NMR question.